Come on, you knew I was going to cover this. Hello and welcome back to the Sharks World, ladies and gentlemen. Today's video is on a topic that I assumed should go without saying, but I now have a study to back it up. This is a study that I encourage you pass around to folks you know, especially if they make shark content like myself. The topic in question is how social media, specifically YouTube content about sharks, affects and shapes people's perceptions of them, or as I worded it in the article, people's tolerance of sharks. As always in my videos, I will leave a link to the article in the description below. I highly, highly recommend that you give this article a thorough read. I was actually able to reach out to the author of the paper, Dr. Justin Beal, and he gave his input that I will share with you later in this video. With those details out of the way, let's not waste any time and dive right in. Grab you a cold drink, pull up a chair to the table, and let's talk about how YouTubers influence Shark's reputation. So, first starters, the article covers some of the threats sharks face in today's world, many of which I and other shark content creators have covered. Because sharks face so many threats, it is nothing short of absolutely vital that we come up with realistic, accurate strategies for shark conservation, some of which I covered in one of my recent videos. But a big piece that is needed in order for shark conservation to be successful is human tolerance. Or in other words, we need people to have a positive view of sharks or a more realistic one. They then cover past examples of sharks being represented poorly in articles and movies, a topic I have talked about extensively and made two videos on. A wise old man once told me that words matter. Even if your intentions are good, the way you word something can convey a different message or thought than from what you wanted. This is where we need to figure out where the general public falls on the spectrum of shark tolerance. And here, the article highlighted something that somewhat surprised me. The evidence Dr. Beale and his team gathered suggests that the global attitude towards sharks is generally positive, which I always love to hear. This is mostly due to the spread of knowledge about sharks and people taking part in shark conservation projects. But this evidence has two sides to it. Globally, the fear of sharks is still very much here and persistent. So, while most people have a positive attitude towards sharks, there's still a number of people's greatest fear. Now, from a human perspective, I can understand this from an evolutionary history standpoint. A lot of sharks are big and powerful animals. They're masters of one of the only domains humanity has yet to conquer. This fear is a lizard brain one from a time, age, and set of rules put in place long before we came into the picture. But dogs and horses are powerful animals as well both of which kill more people than sharks. If both positive attitudes and fear with sharks are high, this tells me that somewhere there's a disconnect. I'd like to think that some of the knowledge covered about sharks globally are their bite statistics, something I cover on a yearly basis. The goal here then is to turn people's fear into fascination to get people to actually care about sharks and not immediately think of them as creatures that stalk you the moment your toe touches the water. 
The article then proceeds to highlight how social media provides a potential great opportunity to educate and change people's perceptions of sharks. A big contributing factor to these are key words. Remember, words matter. They examined 300 US and Australian articles involving sharks and found out that while over half of them focused on shark attacks and shark bites, only 11% of them focused on shark conservation. This, if you ask me, is unacceptable. And look, a big part of my background is mass communications, or in other words, studying how the media works and functions. The point of news, media, and subsequently social media can be summed up in one word, attention. One of the cardinal rules of media is that if it bleeds, it leads. We all know this. The general rule means what can you do to get the most eyes on screen? Title your article or video in a volatile way or make an outrageous thumbnail that taps into people's emotions, curiosities, and fears. When Dr. Beale and his team examined shark-related movies, 96% of them, I repeat, 96% of them depicted sharks as mindless killers looking for the smallest opportunity to harm a human. I've said it before, but let me say this again. There are no good shark movies. I literally did a whole video on it. And Hollywood is still doing it to this day with the recent Meg movies and the up and coming movie Alphas. And believe me, I'll get to that movie in a separate video. This literally influences policies in areas where, when a particular shark is found in an area, they perform what's known as the Jaws effect. This is where animal control takes the shark and moves it to another area to calm the public. The funny part about this is that most of these people underestimate a shark's navigation system. Nine times out of 10, the shark just finds its way back to its home with no problems. But nobody hears about this. They just hear the shark got moved, and that's as far as their attention goes on the subject. Now, on the flip side, whenever people interacted directly with sharks in the wild, like on a tour or something, sit down for this one, folks, they found out that they're nothing like what the media or movies betrayed them to be. Oh my God, Shark Toes, are you telling me that fictional movies don't represent reality? I know, right? On a serious note, this is part of why I always recommend people actually go on a shark tour at least once in their life. Look for tours with people like Jim Abernathy or Christina Zanato who will present to you what sharks are really like in the wild. Calm, intelligent, and curious creatures. Getting back to the article, this is when it pivots to talking about how social media is a relatively unexplored avenue when it comes to talking about sharks, mainly platforms like Facebook and YouTube. Between you and me, I thought Facebook was dying or dead, but here we are. Similar to Australian and US news articles, on Facebook, when it came to posts talking about sharks, 50% of them were about negative human shark interactions. 47.7% of them were about topics unrelated to shark conservation, tours, sightings, popular culture, and so on. Only 2.3% of the posts were about shark conservation. As sad as this is, I understand why this is the case. Because if it bleeds, it leads. 
most people don't research other things about sharks because most people don't care about sharks. I wouldn't say it was hate. It's more a matter of indifference. When they do have to make an opinion on sharks, all they see are the 50% Facebook posts about negative human shark interactions or the volatile news articles titled to catch tension and stoke fear. Despite the evidence proving otherwise, all of this negative exposure cements sharks in people's minds as monsters. And no one cares about a monster. This takes us to YouTube in how it can either be our greatest tool for changing shark perception or the thing that continues the terrible cycle that the media, movies, and Facebook posts have created. Dr. Beale and his team conducted an experiment similar to one done with wolves. The hypothesis and thought process behind this experiment is simple. Positive videos on YouTube increase people's tolerance of sharks, and negative videos decrease people's tolerance of sharks. Here is what they did. They identified a group of residents in North Carolina and some residents of some neighboring states, being South Carolina and Georgia. They then developed two playlists, one for positive shark videos and one for negative shark videos. Both lists were built with certain key words in mind. Remember, words matter. The main key words used to pick out videos were shark, shark week, and the Discovery Channel. Side note, most of you who have watched a lot of my videos know my stance on shark week. Despite that, I understand why one of the keywords they used was shark week, as the program has a very large pool of shark videos to pull from. To qualify, a video had to have a minimum of 3,000 views in order to avoid videos that were unpopular. By the way, we now have to get all of my videos above 3,000 views in case they do this again. Shameless plug, I know, sue me. Once the videos were decided on, the 73 students were then asked to do several pre-surveys based on their thoughts and tolerance of sharks and post-surveys after they watched the videos. Here are the videos they used for the positive shark videos. And here are the negative ones. Now, before we continue, let's see who's been paying attention. Go back and look at the list of positive and negative videos I just showed you and tell me what you noticed in the comments below. You gone and checked? Good. Now, for a proof of concept, who noticed the view counts of the positive videos versus the negative ones? You starting to see the full picture here? A pattern similar to the news articles, movies, and Facebook posts? You see the titles of the negative videos? What's one of the rules of the media? If it bleeds, it leads. That ladies and gentlemen, is why words matter. And this is where I believe the disconnect is happening. However, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. The results from the experiment showed that the positive videos had a greater impact on the students' tolerance. Some around 70% more positive attitudes towards sharks. For the negative videos, the students who watched those only had their tolerance of sharks decrease by approximately 25%. So overall, this experiment implies that positive videos on sharks have a greater impact than negative videos. This, this, ladies and gentlemen, puts a smile on my face. I know my channel isn't the biggest or the most popular, but hearing this type of data makes it all worth it. It's why I'll continue making and pushing positive videos of sharks 
whether they come from my channel or someone else's. While negative videos may have more exposure due to the volatile nature of media, any positive videos can counteract and even cancel out whatever negativity that's out there. To quote Dr. Beale directly, I would say that the biggest takeaway is that our findings suggest that positive social media content about sharks can be more impactful than negative representations. This may present an exciting opportunity to reclaim and reframe the narrative surrounding sharks. This is especially important given some estimates that oceanic shark populations have declined by as much as 71% since the 1970s." End quote. The good doctor is absolutely right here, ladies and gentlemen, and it was nothing short of an honor to cover this article. I would once again highly recommend that you not only give the article a thorough read, but also reach out to Dr. Justin Beale as well with any additional questions. He was also kind enough to send me another article that summarizes their work with more details. I will leave a link to both articles and Dr. Beale's email in the description below. From the Sharks World, thank you once again, Dr. Beale, for providing your insight. And thank you for giving me some of your time. Remember to get plenty of rest during this holiday season, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then.